Hello physical scientists and math learners, I'm Miss Martins and welcome to my YouTube channel. Please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a lesson. Tell me what topic you would like to see next. Enjoy the lesson. Relevance today we're doing Ohm's Law. I'll also be going through some more basic calculations with you that we have covered last year but we need to practice. Okay, so Ohm's law, I have mentioned this before. It's this relationship between voltage or potential difference, current and resistance. So this little triangle comes into play over here. We're gonna be speaking about the mathematical relationship between these three things. Here's a little photo again, just to illustrate what these three things are and what they do. So the voltage or potential difference gives the push to the current to the little um, charges in the circuit. So you see he's kicking the, the amp, so that's the current. The current flows and the resistance resists the current. So it kind of impedes the flow. So yeah, you can see he's tying a little rope around the current and this current guy is saying, currently I'm not traveling very fast, okay? It's supposed to be funny. Okay, Ohm's law. This is a definition that we can ask you. So maybe I should just make that clear definition all right yeah and i want this in your books please because this is the number one new definition you are learning this year in grade 11. okay so let's read the potential difference across a conductor is directly proportional to the current in the conductor at a constant temperature so it's this v equals i times r thing so potential difference is directly proportional to current and you know what directly proportional means. Yeah, we go with the mathematical relationships. <sighs> okay, so it means that as the one goes up, the other one goes up by the same amount, in the same proportion. The one goes down, the other one will go down. So as potential difference or voltage increases, so will the currents increase. And that makes sense because remember the potential difference is the push that the charges need. And when we push the charges, that causes current. So if we give more push, okay, that sounds weird. If we provide the charges with more of a push, so more power basically essentially, then we'll have a stronger current. Okay, here's the relationships again. We can use this triangle to derive any one of the three equations. It's the same thing. It's just isolating a different variable each time. And, okay, yeah, so this is Ohm's law as an equation over there, and this is Ohm's law as symbols. So V, voltage or potential difference, is directly proportional, that's a little fish sign, to I, which is current. But the thing is, it must be at a constant temperature. If we change the temperature, this relationship will not work. So voltage is directly proportional to current at a constant temperature. This is important, and you need to have that in your book as well. Okay, now we have a graph. You can potentially receive a graph like this in your exams and you have to understand what's going on. So over here we have voltage on the y-axis, current on the x-axis, and we have a straight line, a graph that's a straight line going through the origin. In other words, it cuts yeah, at zero, zero. So here it says the graph of best fit is a straight line through the origin. That's important. And what this means is if it's a straight line and it's going through the origin, it means that the conductor is obeying Ohm's law. And Ohm's law basically says that the resistance will remain constant, provided that the temperature doesn't change. So if you look here, voltage divided by current will give you resistance and the resistance won't change. So as I go up in voltage, I'm going to go up in current by the same proportion. So this ratio won't change. So say for example, it's 10 divided by two will give you five, or 15 divided by three will give you five, or 50 divided by 10 will give you five. So you can see that the ratio of voltage and current will give you a constant R. And that's why the graph is straight and it goes through the origin. You can think of this line, this the gradient of this line as being resistance, because we know that we calculate gradients. You should know this. This is literally grade nine work. We calculate gradient by saying the change in y over the change in x. So what is y on this graph? My y is my voltage. So change in voltage over change in current, change in x. 
that gives me my gradients. Here they give you the little triangle. We know that that is used to illustrate gradients. Change in Y over change in X or rise over run, however you learn gradients or learned gradients. That will give you the gradient of the line, which is resistance. And you can see the gradient stays constant. Okay, another thing just to note, again, best fits straight line through the origin. That means that voltage is directly proportional to the current. So as voltage increases, so does current by the same proportion. Here it says in the same proportion. So we know that that is what that mathematical relationship means. Okay, so let's just take a look at these formulae. I'm saying here the greater the resistance, the smaller the current. So look at this middle formula here. If I make R bigger, so resistance bigger, so a big number, I is going to go smaller. So the greater the resistance, the smaller the current. So in terms of the mathematical relationship, it makes sense. But also think of it logically. If I'm providing a greater resistance, so I'm resisting the flow of the current, I'm going to have a smaller current. So it's like going back to this picture of this little resistance guy. If he provides more resistance, there's going to be less current flow. Okay, the greater the resistance, the greater the potential difference across the resistor. So what that means is if I choose to um, include a resistor in my series and it has a very high resistance, I'm going to need to increase my potential difference because it's providing such a high resistance in order to get my current to flow, I'm going to need a greater potential difference or a greater push. That makes sense. So V voltage or potential difference is directly proportional to R. So you can see that here with this formula, if I increase R, so make this number bigger, V is going to go bigger. Okay. Now that just brings us to the last little section of this video, Ohm's law. And you know what Ohm's law is. So if it obeys Ohm's law, we're going to see a straight line through the origin when I plot voltage and current against one another. So it means that the resistance is constant, the resistance does not change. Here we can see straight line through the origin, constant resistance, voltage divided by current will always give me the same R value. So here. So we can use this relationship or this equation. And it says most metals and commercial resistors are close to being ohmic. Okay. Now, non-ohmic does not obey Ohm's law. Look at this voltage and current graph. You do not see a straight line that goes through the origin. You see a kind of a curved line. Okay. So that means that the resistance is not constant. If I go voltage divided by current, I'm going to get different resistance values as I go along. So it'll only work, this equation will only work for specific values, for a specific sets of values, but it doesn't always work. The ratio doesn't always remain constant. Therefore, resistance is not always constant. So you just need to be aware of how a ohmic graph looks versus a non-ohmic. Here's another um, comparison. So this is voltage or potential difference against current. Here's an ohmic resistor and a non-ohmic. See, it curves like that. And again over here, resist, um, resistance is constant here if it's an ohmic device. Resistance is not constant here if it's a non-ohmic device. If you guys are paying attention, you'll actually notice that in this example, they've swapped the axes. So here we've been doing... If you look at all these graphs, we've been doing voltage on the Y. But if you look here, voltage is now on the X. That's okay. Doesn't matter. All that means is that the gradient in this case won't be R. It won't be resistance. It'll be 1 over resistance. Okay. It's not, it's not a massive train smash. Say you work up the gradient here and it's a half. 1 over 2. Then resistance will be 2 over 1, so the inverse. If you work out the gradient for this line and you get 10, so the gradient is 10, resistance will be 1 over 10. That's just because you've swapped current and voltage. Don't worry too much if you're not understanding what I'm saying. We should cover this in calculations. Same thing here, current and voltage. We've swapped axes here, and that's why the curve is going like this. Okay, look at the, the curve here. It's going curving like upwards. Here it's curving downwards. It's just because we swapped the axes. Okay, so you need to look at the axes carefully uh, if you get a question like this.
Okay, so that's Ohm's law. In the next little video, I'm going to go over some more basic calculations, um, covering work that we did in grade 10. So please watch that video.